Hello YouTube, and welcome to another video. This is an 18650. It's uh, so called because of its dimensions. 18 millimeters across by 65 millimeters long. It's a lithium ion rechargeable battery cell and it's capable of storing significant amounts of power. Uh, it, it can also charge and discharge at quite high currents. Now, some of you watching this, this will be quite a familiar sight, but uh, for those of you that it isn't, you might be surprised to realize that uh, these things are all around us today. I had a quick look around my house and uh, here's some of the things that I found that contain these. Um, here's a set of um, wireless headphones. Um, and. Uh they recharge when you plug them back in to this box and you can see this sort of ridge here on the box believe it or not there's an 18650 in there uh, emergency phone charger and sure enough there'll be an 18650 in there as well probably two of them inside there USB phone charger there's probably about eight of them in there cordless drill power pack, there'll be six of them in there. Laptop battery, there'll be six of them in there too. Cordless Dyson, in this battery pack at the bottom here, there'll be about six of these. These electric scooters, this one, there'll be stacks of these inside this long neck that gives it the power for the front wheel and in this one you can see there's a big pack underneath and that will also be made up of lots and lots of these balance board there'll be a big pack of them in there e-bike battery again there will be lots of these stacked up inside of there believe it or not these things are even used in cars the Tesla Model S literally has thousands of these in the floor pan at the bottom of the car. So why am I telling you about these? Because these are now so pervasive, there are an increasing number of items being thrown away that contain them. So is there a way to use these old batteries to perform a useful function? People with solar panels typically have a problem in that when power is needed the most in the mornings and the evenings is when the sun is at its lowest and power production is low. And when power production is at its highest in the middle of the day, most people are out of work and school. So what's the solution to the problem? Well, battery storage. If you can store the excess energy that you're producing in the day when no one's in the house, and then use that in the evening when everyone's home and switches on the TV and the kettle and the dinner and what have you, then you can use that excess solar that you had in the middle of the day that would otherwise have gone to waste to help you get through the evening and through the night and maybe to the following morning. So can I build a home storage solution out of old 18650 batteries? That's what I was going to try and do. Now there are of course commercial systems that allow you to do this and if you're interested in a home storage solution I would definitely recommend that you go and purchase one of those. Firstly, I had to come up with a design that would allow me to build a big battery from lots of these 18650s. Regardless of what voltage I eventually decide to make my pack, I'm going to need to put many cells in parallel to provide a reasonable storage capacity and uh, a reasonable output current. A couple of numbers I plucked out of the air was uh, a 10 amp draw and a 50 amp hour capacity. These are used 18650 cells that I'm going to be taking out of old devices, so I need to treat them gently. Um, so I decided not to draw any more than about 500 milliamps from each cell. So 24 cells in parallel would give me a maximum current draw of about 12 amps and should give me a capacity of about 50 amp hours if each cell has around two amp hours of capacity left in it. I found these 18650 battery holders online. Each one holds four cells and the cell can be 
taken out and replaced quite quickly and easily. Uh, and I thought that would be a good idea because I'm using old 18650 cells. I might need to replace one from time to time. To build each parallel module, I would first measure out a length of wood. Uh, this would be the length of three of those four cell holders. The width of the wood was chosen such that the bus wires on each side would still be narrower than the cell holders. Marking out the centre line would allow for accurate placement of the cell holders. Two lengths of bus wire were cut, one for the positive and one for the negative. They are long enough to protrude from the spine at each end. The idea being that I could connect many blocks together using chop blocks. The sheathing was then marked up with the positions of the cell holder tabs. These sections of sheathing were then removed with a knife to expose the wire beneath, ready for soldering. The finished bus wires were then attached to the wooden spine. I originally used hot glue for this but I found that it melted when I was soldering the cell holder bus wire. So I changed the design to use these U-shaped pins to hold the bus wire tightly to the wooden spine. It was more fiddly to build but much stronger and much more resilient. To keep the bus wire at harm's way and allow the module to stand up with a flat edge, the wooden spine needed to be smaller than the height of the cell holder. Unfortunately, the mounting holes on the cell holder are not quite in the correct place to screw into the wooden spine, so I had to drill new holes to facilitate the connection. I used a countersink to make sure the wood screws would seat flush and not impede the 18650 being inserted to the holder. Once drilled, the holders were attached to the wooden spine with small screws.
Next, I had to join the tab wires to the bus wire. I decided to use very fine wire to do this to act as a fuse for safety. This wire is so thin it melts at just over 1 amp. I picked this specifically because I never intend to pull more than 500 milliamps from each cell. I prepared the connections by applying solder to each tab and to each point on the bus wire. The fuses were soldered on in an S shape to avoid any mechanical stresses on the wire as it's really really thin and very likely to break. Once all the fuse wires were in place, the first batch of cells could be inserted. Here, here I am testing the voltage from my first block. I decided in the end that I would build a 48 volt battery and that would therefore require 14 of these modules in series. This should yield about 2.4 kilowatt hours of energy storage in total. I connected the 14 modules together in two rows of seven, mounted in a wooden frame. The 14 modules were then joined in series using more of the same 10 meter square earthing cable and some 50 amp chop box. Finally, I added a 25 amp BMS to provide protection from overcharging and over discharging. I also installed a 15 amp fuse to protect the pack. The idea of that is if I ever pull more than 15 amps, I want that fuse to blow rather than all the individual little fuses on the cells to blow because that will take me a very long time to replace. And here is the final design. So you can see there are seven modules across the top and seven modules across the bottom. And these are each connected uh, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive in series using chop blocks and this uh, 10 mil squared cable. And then we've got uh, a BMS here which uh, is a 25 amp BMS and it's really only there to not provide much in the way of balance functions but just to, pre to prevent the, the, the power
pack being over discharged it will cut off the power if, if the voltage of any of the cells goes too low uh, and this little circuit board is literally just a way to connect the balance leads uh, to each of the cell blocks and then over here we've got a, um, a fuse holder this is for the 15 amp fuse now it's uh, really really quite heavy um, but uh, it's it's manageable and uh, because of the little legs I've put on it it means I can stack many of these uh, up together to build uh, bigger and bigger batteries okay that's it for this video next one will be more about how I found the cells and process the cells ready to put into those packs if you like this video please uh, hit the like button and uh, do subscribe, um, tell anyone who might be interested in this sort of stuff about it and um, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.